have to extract the data from the table. So like this was the, if I start seeing this, this was the uh, original, uh, one original article by Basu. And here we have just, uh, control group that two outcomes like average highlighted but we are only seeing the uh, this is again see but I, I want to know the total duration of diarrhea which is this one 121 days uh, sorry 121 hours because here it is writing duration here. It is writing in hours. And this again, 143. Coming to the next, like study by Dajik. If you see this, again, uh, they have taken uh, mean and as this is age, weight, this is time to resolution of diarrhea and this is duration of hospitalization. So, this is group 1 is Saccharomyces boulardii. Group 2 is zinc. Group 3 is lactose free formula. Group 4 is Saccharomyces boulardii plus zinc. So I have to see group 1. So this is group 1. So if I see the diarrhea time to resolution of diarrhea, this is 4.7 and 5.3. And the control is the last one, 5.31 and 5.81. So many people, they have used, like they have made more than one intervention. So here you can see ours is only like, we want to see the Saccharomyces that is the probiotic against the, uh, this ORS or the placebo. So that's why I'm not taking the other group, which is like, they have taken Bulladi plus lactose free Bulladi plus zinc and etc. So that's why probably Dalgic has so many varied entry because of the intervention. So you need to see carefully in the table uh, which intervention is important for you, which you have defined as an intervention. So you have defined only as a probiotic as compared to the standard therapy, placebo or no treatment. This is the din lessi and here the, you can see the mean duration of diarrhea before intervention and this is the duration of diarrhea later. Again, they have given it in the as this was the data. This we have taken the snip of the table. This is Dinlesi 2015. Here, the duration of diarrhea in R. Again, this you can see hospitalized children. Saccharomyces group, it is 83. And 114 in the control group. Similarly, emergency care also they have defined. And then outpatient. So now, if you have to enter this, you need to enter this data thrice. Hospitalized children, ambulatory and outpatient. But if you, are, if you don't want that much of heterogeneity, either you can do the data entry separately. So what I mean to say that you have to enter Denlisi thrice. Keeping control the same, here control is different. So in all the cases, control will be different and the author name will be entered. So one data of one author in one row. Remember, one row is for one outcome, one author. So in this case, if there are three, you can see there are three groups and all these are like depending on the different type of population. So if you wish to have all the three, then you need to enter. It is again like study subject. So one study will be in one row but again if you want to take another data that means if you want to take the emergency care unit then again you have to enter the done let's see once more in the row i will show you how to do that that's the main trick of entering the data for meta-analysis then this was datta so datta they have only taken one like study and control and the mean duration of diarrhea you can see here this was the mean duration of diarrhea. You have to see it, it is the outcome variable because many people, they take the duration of diarrhea before administering the uh, probiotic also. So this was the, the same. This was Erdogan. 
again in Erdogan, you can see they have taken three uh, group one control and two intervention, and they have taken two different probiotic. So one probiotic was Saccharomyces boulardii, other was the Bacillus lactase. So if you want to take these two, then you have to enter the uh, this author name twice. Like this is the Excel sheet what we have entered. So you have seen that we, I have entered this Erdogan data. If I just highlight this, so you can see, I have taken like mean intervention, then standard deviation number and control. This is 168 and this is SD. So this data I have taken 158.4. If I see the table, This is one. I have converted that because it is in day. I have multiplied this 6.6 .6 with 24. And then I have taken it in days. So this 3 is, if you see this 3 is ORS, which is the control group. This 3 is ORS, which is the control group. And these two are interventions. So in one row, I have entered this Saccharomyces boulardii. And in the other row, I have entered the Bacillus this one. This is for the bacillus. So that's why I have written star and dollar. And in the uh, bottom, you can put like star is for bacillus and dollar is for the uh, saccharomyces. So control will be same. If you see the control, they are same like uh, your number of control, the mean of control and the standard deviation. This is same. But the intervention, I have taken two interventions like 98.4 and uh, 158.4 depending on the strain. So you can you see like I am entering this uh, author twice. Similarly, you will have to do for the uh, Daljaic which I was telling you. The more intervention, the more you have to uh, take like if it comes in the inclusion criteria of your intervention. Yes, I think one participants have asked some question. Let me see chat. Can you show me asking something to the data entry related? Can we enter a pool data? Pool means I have not understood. Do you want to take a mean and then enter? Pooled means I haven't yeah. understood. Hello, ma'am. Uh, can I we just add all, all those cases and controls? Uh, I mean, for the cases, uh, suppose here it is uh, one side it is 25 and 25. Can we add that to make it 50? Like that only we can, uh, no. is it possible? No, because there are two different intervention. Group is different. It is not the same intervention. So that's why you should not. Because Amen. if you see this, am I audible to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is audible. If you see the intervention, the one is intervention with the uh, this uh, Saccharomyces. And the other is with bacillus. Bacillus like this. So if the author has given two, if the author have like given a pooled one, then that is okay. But if they have given like this, you need to enter it separately. You cannot make it 50 as an intervention and then like make it an average and like make a pool data. Ideally, we should not do that. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, in the previous study, uh, where it is mentioned the the probiotic is same, but the uh, hospital setting, the setting is different. Like in one uh, group, they they made the interventions in the hospital, one in suppose in emergency ward. So those data can we pull up, like uh, for oh. cases, the, uh, that all the hospital age cases. No, I no, you cannot pull that. That also you need to enter that thrice. Because how will you do the subgroup analysis? There might be a case that someone else has done it on uh, only on emergency care unit or somebody has done it on outpatient. Then what you can do, you can only do the meta-analysis of outpatient of this group and outpatient of the other study. If you merge everything together, you will not be able, because you know, in meta-analysis, you have to compare orange with orange, not orange with apple. So if you like merge See, ultimately, if you put something in the software, it will give you the output, right? But when you are putting it, ideally, it is not recommended that you put all these as a pool defect. Ideally, you should enter it separately 
because then you can do the sensitivity analysis and you can do the subgroup analysis you can only select such population because population of emergency care unit and hospitalized and outpatient it will be different that's why they have done in the 3 and if you will see they have seen like here they have not found much difference emergency care if you see 18.6 and 20.2 whereas in in here in this case the difference is more in case of a hospitalized similarly in case of outpatient if you see the difference in mean it is very less it is only 1.2 uh, like 25.2 and 24 1.2 because there will be difference in giving the intervention in outpatient you are not i mean the person who is taking it you are not sure whether they are taking it or not or they are going for some another treatment those data is not available with you so it is not very much in control of the investigator so by seeing the difference only you can make out that if you see the difference is largest here you can leave these data if you don't want because if you want your study to be homogeneous in case of like hospitalized but what we recommend don't leave the data you should enter it in excel sheet you can apply filter in jamovi and you can do a separate i mean you can select studies which you want did you get it got it ma'am thank you are you convinced yes ma'am yes ma'am okay thank you thank you ma because we have seen like we don't apply that much of homogeneity but we were going through the cochrane they they extract i mean they try to make studies so homogeneous we to like we enter <laughs> everything in jamovi and we like report i square that's how like even we have done it i, I should not say but after we have done it and then we, we were going through the cochrane studies and then we thought like my god how much uh, like uh, with accuracy they are doing it they may not be that much accurate maybe because they are like the highest bodies of evidence making and doing the systematic review and meta analysis but at least we can try and do whatever is possible within our uh, limit so that's why uh, we sh we should not pull the result rather what you will do you will enter this din lesai 2015 which even we have not done it three times here in the excel sheet i have only entered it once so i will enter it five then again din lesai and then again din lesai and here it, in the remark you can put like here the inter it uh, the setting or the population was uh, in the ambulatory uh, group in the emergency setting and probably in the outpatient that will help you to you know differentiate are you getting it complete silence someone can put something so that i will be able to yes madam yes madam okay thank you so this is the i think the trickiest part in entering the uh, data because data entry even when we started uh, we were confused how to enter the data like but again we saw few template and then we did and then we have understood that it is the one one row so generally one row is for one individual when we do our original research we enter all the variables of one study subjects in one row so similarly one author if he has studied multiple intervention or the study subjects are different you need to enter you will treat it as a separate one and you will enter it in the separate row like this case then let's say 2015 if you want to include those outpatient children and emergency children result also then you need to enter it thrice in the column with the number uh, inter uh, in the uh, you know intervention group their mean at standard deviation and similarly the number in the control group mean and standard deviation so madam, now it is standard error is uh, there we can club uh, the studies madam in if different papers have different uh, some papers have standard deviation some standard error no then you need to convert it and in that case what we if there are so much of heterogeneity uh, we will take that tomorrow then you need to convert everything into effect size that will help because again standard deviation and standard error is different so we cannot take standard error generally it is mean and standard deviation 
and standard error it comes in case of a effect size like i'll show in the demo v in that case you need to convert many times if it is not consistent across the if you don't find a consistent reporting what we have also uh, faced when we were doing the adhd and uh, air pollution that many people have reported the mean difference many people have reported in the form of a hazard ratio like dr saurav was asking or one person was asking uh, regarding the survival data and few people have reported odds ratio few people have re reported the incident uh, risk ratio or relative risk so all these uh, were different so either what you can do you can convert each into a common one which is the effect size or you can do a subgroup analysis what we did at that time we could not do the conversion of effect size so we analyzed separately like or odds ratio and relative risk we combined why because we say that if the prevalence is very low less than 10% then the value this is odds ratio and relative risk is same so we have cited that reason we combined or and rr and then for hazard ratio we we have done it separately so this is how you have to justify some ground uh, so that your study should be similar in in terms of a uh, outcome okay we will we will try to resolve this issue tomorrow of effect size probably we are working on that and hopefully we should be able to tell you something regarding if there is so much of hetero there is a, a package of comprehensive meta analysis by borenstein uh, we were seeing that and it's it's very good rather whatever you enter whatever data you have it automatically because he has uh, like designed it in a way like it converts it into effect size so we are taking his like we have installed the uh, trial version and we are taking help of that software to put the formula in the in the excel so that if something of and if i don't know whether we uh, we will be able to share that by tomorrow but if not by tomorrow then definitely we will share it in a day or two uh, in the that excel sheet where you can convert this then coming to the so this is a simple uh, the activity which i think most of you have done it correctly now i will go to the a uh, meta analysis so before i start a brief session on what is a meta analysis although i i hope all of you know what is a meta analysis but just to so if you can do the meta analysis this decision this, this decision will be taken after seeing the outcome uh, so you will try to convert the outcome and you will try to see uh, like in this case we will see and you perform it and then you, if you see that heterogeneity is too much like in this case we will see that het initial heterogeneity was 90% then that much heterogeneity it's not ideal to comment on the summary effect or the pooled effect in that case you can leave uh, till uh, systematic review and you can commit that because of the high heterogeneity you could not perform the meta analysis but for that also you need to run the uh, analysis so why uh, when do we do meta analysis so we do a meta analysis when if i uh, wish to do the quantitative synthesis of my systematic review which is the qualitative synthesis then i go for a meta analysis and there are some general principle and specific guideline for that so first is uh, you should see whether there is a availability of quantitative data or not like you were saying many people they don't report uh, the outcome which you have uh, you know decided or the studies are very less in number so in that case if there is a uh, data uh, the research question which you have formulated if you don't get the available data from the studies then it is difficult to conduct meta analysis there should be consistency across studies what i what do i mean by consistency consistency means like seeing the uh, the subject study subjects their age group and you know their uh, the uh, comorbid conditions the length of intervention if some intervention is 3 days and if the other is 1 month that much varied you can't take in meta analysis in that case again you will club like a duration less than 10 days or maybe 10 to 10 20 days something like that then uh, you should have a sufficient number of study again this is said that even with two study you can perform a meta analysis so sufficient number it should be at least two and then there should be homogeneity of studies which we decided on the basis of statistical measure 
and statistical feasibility should be there. So in the, the specific context for our example, if you see, uh, we should see the uh, feasibility of the outcome. In our case, since we have selected a study where you could find all the outcome generally. So we have taken the duration of uh, diarrhea, the mean duration of diarrhea. And the second thing we have taken that uh, proportion, how many of the children, they're still having diarrhea more than four days. So for this outcome, we will see the number of children with diarrhea lasting four or more days in both group. And if they, uh, this data are available, we can calculate the pool odds ratio. So first is we have to evaluate the heterogeneity. So once, uh, and this I think you will evaluate when you are writing your systematic review, you are going column wise. So you know each and every data which is there in your study. So when you read that and when you synthesize that, you come to know whether you can perform meta-analysis or not. Seeing the age age group, seeing the intervention, the seeing the you no know, uh, how the outcome was measured, and the outcome which you have defined, whether you are finding that outcome or not, and if the heterogeneity is too high, then you cannot. It's not advisable to do a meta analysis. So, like in this case, you can see here we have uh, given you the uh, the various just a snip of the studies like Basu Chen. Daljik, Den Lesai, 2014 and 2015. And uh, this was, uh, we have changed the data point for the demo purpose. Actually, you will not see this. So if you have to calculate the average mean, uh, I mean, this difference, this is the difference. What is this difference? It is basically the difference in diarrhea, like 160 minus 155, the mean difference of the diarrhea duration. So can you all please calculate the mean of this? mean of this difference, average of this difference. Yes, please do it now. Dr. Hari Prasad, uh, we will see how to find the percentage of heterogeneity that we will see in JAMOV because we need to do run a statistical package for the calculation of heterogeneity. So Dr. Saurabh is saying 23. 23. So 23. So can I say, can I take the average and say like the pool difference is 23? So can we simply take average and say that pool difference is 3? Do you agree? If I just because mean difference is there with me. So Saurabh is saying no, no. Yes, we cannot say. Why? Because by this we are giving the equal weightage to all studies. Whereas we have seen that studies varied in the norm, uh, power in their way of analyzing the way, uh, you know, the sample size was there and the effect was calculated. So we, are, we cannot give equal weightage to all studies. That's why we cannot do an average of all mean difference and say that this is the pooled average. So we have to assign weightage. Now, what do you understand by weightage of a given study? So if I want to assign weightage, there are two concepts. There is a fixed effect model and there is a random effect model. We are not going to give you very detail of all these fixed and random effect. Just the underlying principle when you should go for fixed effect and when you should go for random effect. That difference or that differentiation you should be able to make. And again, uh, like if you have time, you can go and listen to the Borenstein lecture of random and fixed effect. And we have gathered this concept from his book because we have shared that book with you people also, uh, the book on meta-analysis. You can uh, listen to his lectures also. And he has emphasized a lot on this true and fixed, uh, fixed and random effect model. Why? Because generally, if you go through uh, literature, uh, if you read meta-analysis, generally what people say that they have found out that there was a lot of heterogeneity. Like let's say they say that if heterogeneity is 60%, they go for a random effect model. So they do other way around. They see the heterogeneity and then they apply the model. But that's not the way it should be done. And say Doing the systematic qualitative synthesis of the data 
during that time you know that there is a quite diversity like in our case also we have seen that there are our studies from the australia there are studies from the asia and there are studies from the us and europe so of course there is so much of variation so fixed effect model means the population are not that hit that uh, not that much heterogeneous it's a kind of homogeneous and he has given an example of school also like in if you go in one school and collect many sample then this will be example of fixed effect because population is fixed but if in in a, in a district if you are sampling for from many schools then the schools are different then you cannot go for a fixed effect so basically this fixed and random effect is related to the background uh, uh, the country or the background uh, setting from where you are picking up that study so what is a fixed effect model so generally we use a fixed a fixed effect model when all studies are nearly identical in their population intervention outcome measure and process but it's very difficult to find out generally you will see that there is a lot of diversity and this model assumes that there is only one true effect size so you can apply the from the concept of population means generally remember when whenever we do the original study what we say we say that the population mean we don't know so through study mean or through the sample mean we predict the population mean similarly here we we talk in terms of effect size so here in this this model assumes that whatever studies we are we have included so about because ultimately what do you want to say we want to do the external generalizability why are we doing this meta analysis i think i got to insert that slide the because there is why there is a need of meta analysis because if there are small small studies everywhere some studies are saying that you should go for probiotic some studies are say, saying that no it is not effective so as a, as a clinician i will be confused what to do whether i should giving i should be giving the probiotic or i should not be giving the probiotic since all the studies might be like in this case you can see done on smaller sample size so you cannot so if you pool all these studies then of course the sample size will increase and that summary effect or pool effect will help you in understanding the uh, decision making so basically the in, this meta analysis helps in decision making of a clinician or evidence based medicine you can say so fixed effect model that assumes that there is only one true effect size means for the population where you want to do the external generalizability there is only one true effect size that is consistent across all studies and that's why the studies with larger sample size gets more weight that's the that's the uh, that's a rule in case of a fixed effect model and this diagram we have taken from the borenstein so taking the example of school so suppose like in from one school you have taken you have done three studies let's say any like prevalence let's say prevalence of probably the refractive error so this is study 1 this is study 2 and this is study 3 so th these three are the true effect size of this population so which, which is the same so if you see in the fixed model the effect size of all these three will be same as the true effect size that's why it is lying in one line but now coming to the model when you apply the model there is a observed uh, value and there is a model value so observed value for study 1 is this one this cube is the observed value for study 1 this is observed value for study 2 and this is observed value for the study 3 this circle which you are seeing here they are the true effect size so true effect size is same as the underlying effect size on the single but these are the observed effect size so you can see there is a error so these uh, sigma uh, this sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 these are known as the sampling error so they say that whatever the difference which you are seeing the difference between the observed effect size and true effect size that is due to the sampling error that's the basis of the 
uh, this fixed effect model. Now coming to the random effect model. So this random effect model says that when there is a, in, do, while doing the qualitative synthesis, in case of this probiotic diarrhea, I will never go for a fixed effect. Why? There is so much of heterogeneity. There is a heterogeneity in the age group. There is a heterogeneity in type of intervention. There is a heterogeneity in the country. There is heterogeneity in the age group. So all this heterogeneity, I will know, I cannot go for a fixed effect. So generally, they say that in health sciences, in 99% of the time, you have to apply a random effect model. Why? Because there will be a lot of heterogeneity. But don't decide this on the basis of I square statistics, which we will see later. That is one of the criteria to determine the heterogeneity. So you should apply this type of model based on the qualitative synthesis of the study which you have done in the systematic review. So this study, this model assumes that each study estimates the different uh, effect sizes and therefore there is a variability. So remember those of you who have attended ANOVA or those of you who know the ANOVA, in ANOVA we usually talk of two so sort of variances. There is a within study variances and there is a between study variances. Similar concept we will apply here in the random effect model. So here the weight assignment, it is done not only on the uh, sample size, but there are other criteria also. So this is a picture we have taken from the Borenstein. And here you can see that unlike the fixed effect model, there it is not lying in the same line. So this is a, it follows a normal distribution curve. So you can see these are the three studies, study one, two, and three. These are the three different effect size and this is the actual effect size, I mean the, of, uh, the overall population. So if you see this for study one, they have only given the example that this is the sampling error. So for study three, if you see, you need to have two error. One is the sampling error, which is the within study variance. So this is the within study variance, which is the, which will be there of course due to sampling error. And there's another variance, which is the tau. So this, they call it as a tau or they call it as a standard deviation in case of a random effect model. I don't know if you are not able to understand. No, no problem. You just... This is fixed. Yes. So they say, you just remember that there are two types of error. In case of a random effect, this is there with the fixed effect also, sampling error. But here, there is a sampling error as well as there is this tau, which is for the heterogeneity. Okay. So now we will understand what are the various elements in meta-analysis. So Dr. Soptik is asking, ma'am, mostly in many numbers of review article, yes, random effect. I said that even Borenstein says, that in health sciences, whenever, like in case of India, let's say, I said that many people are now, now going for studies only in India. So if you are doing a systematic review only of studies in India, and if you find that there's a lot of homogeneity, like maybe studies from, mostly studies are reporting, getting reported from UP, Bihar, Odisha, and all these uh, states, uh, then you can go for a fixed effect. But generally, Rarely you will find because there will be differences in the intervention. There will be differences in the study outcome. There will be differences in the measurement, how they are measuring. So random is always safe to go. You can always apply a random effect model. That's what I am just quoting what Borenstein has said. Uh, because we are also following the standard textbook and standard like people who are well known in this speciality. So this is like uh, one uh, research, meta-analysis of cardiovascular outcome trials. Yes. So this example, again, uh, you will get this in the book, which we have shared. Meta-analysis of cardiovascular outcome trial comparing intensive versus moderate statin therapy. So here you can see, uh, this is a forest plot. And uh, there are various uh, columns here. You can see there's a study name. There's a risk ratio, which is the effect size. Relative weight of the study. This is the plot and this is the p-value. 
So if you see, uh, you should start the uh, and you have to enter the data like this. So first should be the first name of the author. You can type the uh, year also, and then comes the effect size or the in our case, um, it is not the effect size, rather it is a mean and standard deviation. And then the relative weight, this you will get uh, from the analysis. And then this is the forest plot. What are the elements of forest plot? And then you get the summary. At the bottom, you get the summary, which is the pool defect size. This one is the pool defect size, the diamond here. And there are small uh, squares. So size of square depends on the weight. So you can see the large, largest weight is here in the ideal study, 37%. That's why the size of square is largest in this. And then here comes the p-value. So you will see uh, that uh, the study where the sample size is more, the confidence interval is less. Here you can see this, is, this has got the least weight, 13%. So that's why if you have to see its uh, value from where it is extending, you can see the what the horizontal spread is more as compared to this study of ideal. So the uh, if you see the uh, sample size, the larger the sample size, more precise the result will be and it will get more weight. And you can see here, I'll, uh, this is one, which is the null. So in case of effect size, one will be the line of null and that we will see in Jamovi because when you do the analysis in the effect size, Jamovi always gives this null as uh, one and then you have to see how you are going to, uh, many times you have to draw one line and then uh, this is point 0.8, here you have to write fav favors high dose and this is favor standard dose. So you can see the full effect it is saying that high dose if you see the title of the study, so high dose definitely uh, improves the cardiovascular outcome. So that was the uh, real study which was done. This is again the impact of statin dose. So can we say here that the study with more precision get more weightage in meta-analysis? So yes, you can see like the study which are more precise, we get a more uh, weight in the Beta analysis. Now there are few terms uh, which we will see in the JMOV, but uh, what we have thought that we will explain that now and we'll again repeat that when I will show you how to do the meta analysis in JMOV. So here you can see this one. So this is the uh, this diamond, and if you see the edge of this diamond, so you can see like this and this. This is the confidence interval of this pooled estimate. So you can say the confidence interval is from 0.8 till, let's say if it is 1, then it can be 0.9. So that is the confidence interval. So what is the confidence interval of the pooled estimate? So basically the confidence interval gives you the range uh, like the true or the pooled estimate. Uh, it will show like 95% of the width. In this case, we will see like it is the 22 hours. So minus 32 if I see if I say uh, and we all know regarding uh, the confidence interval what is a, what is a confidence interval so basically it tells you regarding the precision of the study and in our case the confidence interval was 0 0.32 to 13.25 that means like uh, the true average effect of the probiotic on diarrhea it will range from the there will be a reduction of 32 hours to uh, 13 hours in in this uh, in this uh, outcome. So it again shows the uncertainty around the pool mean. And if you see the formula, the formula you don't need to remember the formula. So I'm skipping that because you uh, see you will uh, see this in the uh, Jamovi. Now there is something known as the prediction interval. So there is a confidence interval and there is a prediction in interval. There is a difference between these two. Confidence interval, I hope all of you know. Prediction interval is regarding the prediction of future studies. So this tells like if any future study will be conducted, how the effect size will vary in that future, uh, this thing. 
so you can see like in this case uh, it was like minus 56 to 10 we will see that so it will tell you like if the say the study this study will be conducted in future so the spread of effect size can be from minus 56 to the plus 10 and this is in this case for the prediction effect you need to have another this thing which is the tau which is the between study variance which we does just discussed in the random effect model remember anova between study and within study so this tau is the between study variance now this tau is the also known as the standard deviation of the true effect size uh, across the included studies and this is a heterogeneity statistics so there are three there are four heterogeneity statistics with jamovi gives you like dr uh, hari prasad was asking how to report heterogeneity so we will see that in the output uh, there are four heterogeneity statistics first is the tau tau gives you the standard deviation of true effect size so it suggests regarding the variability of the effect size between the study there is another heterogeneity statistic which is the tau square so when you square the standard deviation it gives you the variance so this tau square is the variance of the true effect across the study a uh, different study so how ties tau square means a large variability in the effect size then comes the i square and most of you will see that people report this i square so what is this i square this measures the percentage of variability of the observed effect size due to the heterogeneity so it is not due to the chance but but, but actual there is a heterogeneity in the selected studies which you have selected so if there is a uh, up till 75 percent it is okay but more than 75 percent generally meta-analysis so like uh, 25 percent 50 percent is okay very much good and after like 75 percent or more you should not perform meta-analysis because it will suggest that it is uh, very much uh, studies are very much heterogeneous in nature Okay, so Shoptik is asking me to repeat the confidence interval. So basically the confidence interval, I will again repeat it, Shoptik, when we will see the actual data. I am just telling you the concept. Mohit is also asking me to repeat. Chat is like, Dr. Shamshad, can you... Pull that chair, that side. I'm not able to see the chat. Yes. Uh, relative weight means weight. Uh, okay. So, uh, can you go above, above Mohit? Mohit, above Mohit. Kindly repeat. Okay. So, uh, repeat the confidence interval portion. So, stop the confidence interval like we say in this case, summary effect. Again, I said that I will uh, tell you this says like the studies which you have included in one in some of the studies. If I go again back to the, that slide, we will see the result. Actually, I have not shown you the result in the result which we have performed the meta analysis. The uh, effect size was 22.99. What does that mean? That means like if you give the intervention, the mean duration of diarrhea decreases by 23 hours the and the minimum decrease will be 13 hours this is this i mean by the uh, confidence interval that means if i have to use probiotic i'll have to see that in my uh, although the reported value is 23 hours I may increase the decrease the duration of diarrhea by 32 hours or it can be as low as 13 hours also. Have you understood Soptic confidence interval portion? Okay. Yeah. Then coming to the next concept, relative weight. Relative weight means giving the weight. Remember, we have given you one exercise when you have taken out the average of all which was coming like 23 
So you took out the average of mean difference. So there you have assumed that all studies are different. And that's why you took the average. I mean, uh, but we cannot do like that because relative weight means when you have done that, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the risk of bias also, you say that studies are of very good quality and studies are of not very good quality. So that you are doing is something of a qualitative in nature based on that JBI criteria. Similarly here, that relative weight in case of a random, in case of a true effect, fixed effect model, it is entirely dependent on the sample size. But in case of a random effect model, it depends on a lot of factors. A lot of factor means there, there is a between, sub, uh, subject, uh, between study variation, there is a within uh, study variation and taking all these variances into account, this gives the relative weight. So you don't need to go into the detail of uh, calculation of this relative weight. Just think that taking these variability into account, it gives a, uh, it gives a weightage to the various studies. Okay. Is it okay, Dr. Chatra? Relative weight means like the weight of the study which you have taken in your meta-analysis. All studies will not be same. Like in this case, you can see, this is the relative weight. Relative weight means the studies which are larger in sample. They have not given the sample size, but you may keep the sample size also as one of the variable because it will help you in writing the uh, if you go and see the sample size, definitely this ideal sample size will be very much as compared to this, uh, this proved study. So that's why the more sample size, the more weight you get. That's one rule. Whether it is a fixed effect or random effect. In fixed effect, it is entirely dependent on sam sample size. In random effect, apart from sample size, there are other factors also into account. Because in fixed effect, it is only the sampling variation. That's why you get it. But in case of a random effect, it is the within study variation and between study, which is the tau heterogeneity that is also taken into account. Okay. So I was, okay. So I was discussing this heterogeneity statistics. So we have seen tau, which is the standard deviation that tells you heterogeneity. We have seen the tau square, which is again a heterogeneity statistics. The most important used heterogeneity statistics is the I square, which is the, we call it as I square, but since Higgins has given this concept, so it is also known as the Higgins I square. And you classify the amount of heterogeneity based on the value. So up till 50%, it is moderate. 75% or more, it is, uh, I mean, it is not acceptable at all. And then there's a head H square, which is also known, known as the heterogeneity index. So this is another measure of heterogeneity and in it, which indicates like how much larger than Q statistics it is expected. We will learn what is a Q statistics. So if all the studies are measuring the same effect, if H square value is more than one, that means it is a heterogeneous. And higher, if the values are higher than one, like 10, 11, then it suggests more heterogeneity. If H square is equal to 1, that means there is no heterogeneity. Okay, so you should only remember that this H square is also a heterogeneity index. And if it is more than 1, then that means there is a heterogeneity. Now there is a something known as the Q test or the Cochrane Q test. So Cochrane Q test is the, uh, you see the difference between the observed uh, variability and you see that if the values is high, that means it is not by chance. So again, it follows a chi-square distribution. And if the value is significant with certain degree of freedom, and if it is significant, that means there is a variability. That means there is a significant heterogeneity. So what all we have seen? Tau, tau square, I square, H square, and Q test. Okay, five measure of heterogeneity. Most commonly used is the I square, which is the Higgins I square. But you should remember that if the P value of this Q is significant, if H square is more than one, or if I square is more than 75, that suggests a high value of heterogeneity. 
am i making myself clear up till this point then i'll go ahead and we have covered only very basic one and we are not going to tell you the how it is calculated and the statistical concept behind it because it is not of any use you should be able to understand uh, the result although jamovi writes it but still you should be able to understand so this will help you in understanding the amount of heterogeneity which are there in your okay so prashant is saying the values so values again the tau and tau square is you say that it should not be very large but there is no abstract cut off i cannot say that if it is more than this then it will not be the only categorical thing is where you can say with confidence that is the i square so remember that if i square is up till 25% low 25 to 50 moderate and 50 to 75 uh, is again up till 50 to 75 it is more than it is high so coming to this h square again h square is if it is more than 1 we say it is heterogeneous matlab studies are heterogeneous and the value of q statistics p value if it is uh, significant we say that there is a heterogeneity is it okay dr prashant we will again see this value when we do the meta analysis actually i am only telling you the theory because when i will explain the result in jamovi it will help you in understanding that's why we are telling this before hand so that you should not feel that the concepts you don't know or you have not heard of it just for you know ease of understanding we are introducing these concept now there is another term which is known as the publication bias so publication bias we have tried if to remove uh, through what the search we have tried to uh, remove the publication bias yes please type in the chat box how we have tried for the removal of that is so statistical panel plot yes i agree but how about the systematic yes dr chatra is right gray literature so if you search for gray literature like google google scholar yes swati is also right a back citation forward citation seeing the thesis pro quest shodh ganga all those sources of gray literature if you could retrieve some article then in qualitative part which is the systematic review you have tried to remove the publication bias now coming to the quantitative part which is the publication uh, which is the meta analysis again like uh, so, i think so, shubha ranjan has said like funnel plot so yes visual is funnel plot and there are statistical values also so there are the jamovi we are only talking of jamovi each software has its own way of giving these results and the tests but since we are since we know in jamovi and we are telling you to do it in jamovi since it is freely available and i think for all our purposes it works it worked and we have seen many articles it is working so you can at least do uh, like three or four types of meta analysis in jamovi so coming to the uh, quantitative measurement of this because funnel plot is a visual so apart from that there are other tests which jamovi gives as output the first is the fail safe test so what is this fail safe n fail safe n means it gives you the number so like in this like uh, today analysis we will see in this result it gives you a number like 855 so what is this 855 855 means that 855 articles with no effect would be required to nullify the effect size so if the p value is less than 0.001 it suggests that the publication bias is unlikely so what is fail safe n fail safe n tells you how many missing or unpublished studies with null result would be needed to bring an overall effect size to non significance in this case it is significant so if the value is less than 0.001 or 0.01 uh, i mean 0.05 in this case it was 0.001 that's why we have written it second is your beg majumdar rank correlation again if the, you can see that if the p value is non significant so in case of fail safe you are desirous of a significant p value 
but in case of beg and majumdar rank correlation you want p value to be more than 0.05 that means if p value is non significant it indicates that little or no bias in your effect size similarly there is another test which is the eggers regression test this also you want it to be non significant so both this rank correlation and eggers regression test you want your p value to be not significant and in first case which is a fail safe n you want your p value to be significant please don't get apprehensive by these names these all are there in the jamovi output we will repeat it many times and then there is a trim and fill method if it the value says zero that means it did not add to any studies and result is unbiased so these are the four statistical way to determine your publication bias and generally it is recommended funnel plot i will show you uh, where in, in the output and uh, it is recommended that if the article number of article is less than 10 then there is no point doing the publication bias so if the number of included results are more than 10 then you should go for this uh, publication bias so now i will show you the meta analysis so i i hope you all know about the jamovi interface or should i start from the beginning like importing the data and all yes can you help me in deciding should i start from import or should i start straight away from the, uh, the data which i have imported from beginning okay so i will start it in excel okay so this was the data in the excel sheet so in the column in the first column let me make it normal otherwise it is close it so the in the first column you need to enter the study name i have taken the year also then in the second column it's the number in the intervention group we have arranged data sheet like this because in jamovi if you see the sequence the upper one says about the number in intervention then mean in intervention then sd similarly so that's why we have kept order like this you can keep any order but you have to be careful which field you are entering into it to uh, in the jamovi this is mean of intervention this is standard deviation this is the number in control number mean of control and sd and you all have done this exercise so you know this is the value and we have converted the uh, days into hours now i'll import this i will go and open jamovi i hope you all have installed jamovi if not kindly do that so i have opened a new sheet let me close this excel sheet otherwise i it won't get imported so this is the uh, blank jamovi sheet so how to import data yes ananya you will also have the data file please uh, share the same file in okay yeah. we will uh, say share okay mohit is saying no idea kindly give an overview okay i will give an overview uh, so this jamovi uh, you when you have to install go to the google and install the solid version of jamovi so in the breakout room you will be directed or else you go to the google type jamovi download that if you click on this jamovi desktop 
and it gives you both current version and the solid version. So we recommend to download this solid version. If you come down, it will give you like window, current, solid, Mac and Chrome. So generally we have got window. So go for this window solid. You click this and then keep on doing next, 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 and it will be installed on your desktop. This is the way you can install Jamovi. Now, once you have installed, make an icon in the, you know how to make an icon on the desktop, or you can go from the from this here, and you can click on Jamovi, and a plain sheet, blank sheet will be opened. Uh, now, how to import data? See, you can see there are various tabs here, Maybe if you install Jamovi for the first time, you may not be able to see those, these many tabs. I think you will have till probably factor or frequencies. The, there are various modules. And can you see a plus sign here? So these plus sign shows you the available modules which are there. So you need to install that module. So for uh, this uh, meta-analysis also, so in that, in our case, you can see there's a factor, there's a survival, there's a linear model, J power, so many are there. For meta-analysis, you have to install this major. So go to this plus and search here in the Jamovi library. So if you click on that, it will show you available and installed. And you can search, like I can search for major. So you can say when you type major, it will write that major is the meta-analysis for Jamovi. And it is an interface for Jamovi and the R package metaphor. So if you want to update it, like since I have installed it, I can update it. So I can click on this update. Because many times what happens that people keep on writing codes and the existing module gets, uh, you know, Improve getting because many many tests we have seen we have experienced that three months back we did some analysis and after three months the interface got changed. Okay, I have clicked it again. This will take some time, but once you click this, there's no way to cancel that. Internet speed is also low. I should not have done that, but since out of curiosity, I I have done that. But for meta analysis, you have to download this major. Uh, module from this plus sign once you download this uh, Jamovi software. Yeah. It is saying some permission is denied. That is okay. So, but maybe if you, uh, I mean, no need to do that. Uh, uh, updation I'm not doing right now since I have already installed it will take time. So uh, this is the interface. If you see this, this is the variable. You can create your variable. You can see our previous videos. There are many videos available because we have conducted many basic courses of Jamovi. Basic one I will tell you. This is the data interface. And in the both interface you can uh, you can have the data. You can export the Excel sheet in this data form and the result will be uh, here you can see the result then and there in the same interface. That's the beauty of Jamovi. And you have got mostly all the functions. So how to import data? And there are other functions also like this is the uh, compute option. This is the transform. You can do this with the variable. You can add filters. And this filter used, we have to do, we will apply a lot of filter in case of a meta-analysis. Why? Because we will see what type of filter we need to apply. So these three uh, uh, horizontal line, I'll click and then I will write it as new. Sorry, open. And then I will keep on this browse. Once you click on this browse, then it will ask from where I have to see the data. So data sheet is there in fourth day. Today is fourth day. So this is mean SD. I will see the time also. 421, 29, 10. So this is the data I will. And in this file format, you can see it takes all sort of files. So this I will press this open. So you will see that. 
now you have this 12 studies with you with the number in the intervention now you will see that there are some madam, variables madam, second, madam. go to this click on open browse browse and browse. show the path wherever you have kept your excel just import that since i have opened that's why i am not doing it again did you get thank it you, so you need to change this because all of these are continuous so you have to click on this double click and instead of nominal because study will be nominal here type of study will be nominal but other like you don't want it to be nominal otherwise it doesn't take so make it continuous double click on that variable change this to continuous then keep on scrolling this is again continuous mean sd is continuous again this is a number you you can do it like again this is continuous sd is continuous and this is nothing this is again i think so again you can save this but once you have done the imported the data save with the file so if you have understood up till this point then i'll show i'll go ahead and install the module the module name is major this one right now don't install other modules you currently install only the the basic one the basic analysis with jamovi solid and then install this major for this meta analysis activity are all of you or on the same page like am i making some sense to you then i'll go ahead with the uh, showing you the analysis can someone say okay soptik is saying yes okay so i'll go ahead with this data only there are two jamov files but i'll go so how i'll go if uh, i will just go and click on this major so if you click on this major you can see so many types of meta analysis is available meta analysis of correlation coefficient dichotomous model effect sizes mean difference proportion reliability generalization so currently which which uh, option should i click you all have to help me mean difference yes mean difference true so i'll click on this mean difference so once you click on this mean difference you will see that this red uh, tab is uh, appearing like sample size mean standard deviation study label field must be populated to run the analysis so it is showing uh, missing uh, major is missing why because it did not get updated because i have opened it so that's why i will show you on the other one wait i will just close this don't say because i remember when i was uh, doing it i just clicked by mistake on the so let me delete all the analysis otherwise you can uh, can see control and you can remove this so now i have removed all the analysis okay so this was the interface since it did not get updated there the major one that's why it was not showing so now i'll click on this major mean difference so what you can see here first you enter the study so study comes here study label categorical variable can you see it again shows you what type of variable it is so this flower shows you the categorical variable now you can see this is the number in intervention so we are taking group 1 sample size group 1 mean this is the intervention mean and this is a standard deviation keep on entering number in the control you can keep this 1 and 2 it is up to you which is number 1 whether it is intervention or control then this is the mean of control and this is the standard deviation of control so we have entered now we are not talking of this moderator variable let's do first simple meta analysis so you will see that 
it will take some time and then what we have observed that you can see it writes the results also can you see is it visible yes ma'am yes so now i'll start explaining this one by one so first when you see this since by default this takes the random effect model okay so random effect model k is equal to 13 what does it mean i am not going to read this although jamovi has written the interpretation but i'll explain and then we'll read that also so this tells you regarding the random effect model here it, it gives you the intercept which is 0 0.71 then it gives you the uh, value of standard error z value and then confidence interval which is the 1 and 1.4 okay. 0.4 so yes here it is writing the tau square estimator is restricted maximum likelihood so if i go down it is saying that model estimator is the restricted uh, maximum likelihood and effect size is standardized mean difference. I am mean, I mean, not then... able to understand. I want it as a raw. So what I will do, I will click on raw because raw you can see and you can make inference. So if I click the raw, then you can see that there were 22 uh, uh, hours of difference. Since I have done intervention minus control, that means in intervention, the mean duration of diarrhea, it decreased to decreased by 22.23 hours with a 4.9 standard error. This is the Z value using which it has calculated P value and the P value was significant. So yes, definitely the pooled effect is showing that there is a, uh, I mean, there's a statistically significant difference in the intervention group with this probiotic now coming to the <clears throat> this heterogeneity statistics so remember we have talked about this tau tau square i square x square and then q statistics so tau is 16 that means the standard deviation is 16 if you square it this is your tau square now we will focus on this i square so you can see the i square is so high I square is 90.91%, approximately 90%. So there is a high heterogeneity. Even if you see the H square, more than one value sh shows that there is a heterogeneity. And this Q statistics also, if you see the P value, it shows that it is significant. That means there is a, there is a significant heterogeneity. Okay. So in model option, what you do whenever you do this, Actually, it takes these uh, by default, it takes the standardized mean difference because standardized mean difference, like it is uh, standardizing it and dividing it by standard deviation. We don't want that. We want raw mean difference. So that's why I clicked it to raw. Coming to the model estimator, if you click this, there are various options of model estimator. The most common we use this, the first one. There is a presentation of this model estimator also, but I'm not going into the detail of that let's discuss first the result so you can use this d uh, simeon layered uh, method of model estimator also and this will also not change the result much <clears throat> let's wait so again you see that with this i square has gone down a little bit but again there's not a much difference again this will remain same now before i read this let me come here so it gives you the 95% of this uh, confidence interval of this raw mean difference. You can click on this uh, display model fit, which will uh, show you here that it is again. This is the model fit statistics, AIC, BIC and log likelihood. But generally there is no need to see this because <clears throat> Generally, you will say that you will see that people don't report these report these model fit statistics. Now coming to plot. So if you come down, you can see a forest plot here. So forest plot here, the null it is taking as zero. Why? Because it is the mean difference. 
So it is taking this zero and this is the overall summary effect. So summary effect you can see it is and it is giving the summary effect of uh, <coughs> confidence interval also. So this diamond, this right and left part is giving you the confidence interval. Now if you want to change the value, if you want weight, right now it, it doesn't give you the weights. So if you want to click the model fitting weights, it will show you So now can you see these weights? So it has assigned a weight like weights to each and every study that you should report. Actually you will just right click this and you will do some changes. Here it is writing random effect model but here you have to write like when you will uh, send this for publication you need to put like before this line is what? So you will write like this is a probiotic and after this zero is no pro probiotic. Then this again you can increase the plot size if you want a bigger plot or a medium size if you click on medium the size will be like big. <clears throat> forest plot so depending on these if you want like more you can see now the forest plot is big. You can change the uh, this uh, if you want like effect size with a triangle or circle this, these are just designing issues. And like now coming the study order here, you can see fitted value. So if you want that uh, fitted value means what model is giving. And observed effect size is what is observed. So if you want this with observed effect size, that is okay. But again, if you, if you keep it at fit, fitted value, that is okay. So this is your uh, forest plot. Now uh, coming to funnel plot. So before funnel plot, uh, you see the so here you can see it is the 22 point. This I was talking regarding the confidence interval. That this is 20, minus 22.85 means in the intervention group. Overall the summary effect shows that there was a reduced duration of mean diarrhea by 22 hours. With a maximum reduction of 31.82 to a minimum reduction of 13.87. Dr. Saurabh did you get it? And Dr. Saptik I think you asked this. Uh, yes, madam, it's okay. Okay. So now coming to, this was the forest plot coming to the publication bias assessment. Madam. Yes. Madam, while doing in meta analysis, it is writing in red that need finite Excel MIM values. Pardon, what, what, what is he saying? It's right. Madam, while doing the meta analysis. Okay, you are, you are doing it right, currently. Yes, madam. Okay, that maybe we need to see it in the breakout room because after this we will give a breakout room to you. There you can share your screen and screen, and then we need to see where you are, where is the error. Is it okay? Right now you just see, and then all that error will be detected and it will be resolved. Don't worry. Maybe there will be some problem in the file type. <coughs> you have shared the file type, no? Or uh, we'll see that. Coming to the study, publication. Study study okay, study study name. Dr. Shamshad is saying that in data, this study, this here, analysis. Study name. Okay. Yeah. Have you put the study label in the here in the study? Yes, madam. Then we need to see. Yes, ma'am. We'll break out from Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Coming to the publication bias, you can see like these are the four or five tests which we have discussed. Fail safe, it is significant. That means but there is no publication bias. And this p value, both these p value, we want it to be non significant. It is there. And Trim and Phil is also saying that zero, zero. <clears throat> that means zero studies 
it is also saying that there is no publication bias. Now, visualizing the funnel plot, if you see the funnel plot, there is a x axis and there is a y axis. So, on x axis, you can see there is a mean difference. This line tells you the the uh, pool defect. So, pool defect was minus twenty two. You can see here it is minus twenty two point eight five. So, this dotted line tells you the pool defect, the summary measure. And then you see the studies uh, and you have to see whether there is a symmetry. And these are the standard error. So, as you move up, you can see that the standard error is getting less. So, this study is definitely outside this. And although it is showing you symmetry, but studies are not distribu uh, distributed. So, this funnel plot is showing that there is a heterogeneity of the studies as well as there is some publication bias because all studies are not like uh, homogeneously, homogeneously distributed. But again, it is a visual and the above, this one is the uh, statistical. So, you can comment on statistical also and you can comment like this forest plot. It is uh, showing that there is a little bit of symmetry there, but not all studies are falling into it. So, there is a heterogeneity. Now, coming to uh, the other measures. So, no, I will not tell you first this. Uh, I am not showing you uh, deliberately that influential diagnostic. Once you learn this, then I will show you the influential diagnostic. Okay. So, deliberately I am not because then otherwise you will be in problem. Problem means then a lot of command will go into your head. And now can someone read this? For me, let me ask someone, is it visible? Can someone read this paragraph? Yes, madam. I'm sure I can read. Oh, yes, please. The analysis was carried out using the mean difference as the outcome measure. A random effects model was fitted to the data. The amount of heterogeneity, that is tau square, was estimated using the uh, uh, Desum uh, Simonian uh, Lied estimator, 1986. In addition to the estimate of tau square, the Q test for the heterogeneity, heterogeneity and the I square statistics are reported. In case uh, any amount of heterogeneity is detected, uh, that is. Uh, tau square greater than zero regard, regardless of the results of the Q test, a prediction interval for the true outcomes is also provided. St uh, studentized residuals and Cook's distances are used to estimate the whether studies may be outliers and are influential in the context of the model. Studies with a standardized residual larger than the uh, 100 into one uh, one you are right one minus point zero five by two into k kth percentile actually this is just the assumptions and the way uh, jamovi has analyzed it is writing you don't need to give this into your result because this is telling you that you know it is giving you the value of tau square i have not told you the prediction interval i will tell you that and it tells you like how it detects the studentized and Cook's distance, which I, I have not uh, say, uh, told you. This will come in this influential diagnostics. So deliberately, I am not telling you this right now because once you learn this meta-analysis, then I will show. And then it is uh, showing the Cook's distance. That means it is uh, telling that for influential diagnos diagnosis, generally in linear regression and in regression, we know about these distances and the studentized residual. Remember, to see that if the data is uh, outlier, we used to perform this outlier diagnostic, which is the Cook's distance and the studentized residual. Here also, Jamovi uses the same concept and it sees whether any study is outlier or not. And we will see that if you remove few studies, your I square or heterogeneity will reduce. But that's the further part of analysis. Let's concentrate now over the basic analysis. So now coming to the another paragraph, the second one, this you have to write in the, uh, no, before that, let me click the prediction interval. So the, here, if you see this here in the forest plot, there is a box and I have checked that for the prediction interval. So you will see that 
apart uh, from this pool day estimate of this 95% ci now can you see that a line has appeared here can you appreciate the difference without prediction and with see this now and if i uncheck this this the this horizontal line has disappeared so actually this diamond gives you the value as well as the 95% confidence interval when you check this it it when you check this box it gives you the prediction interval so prediction interval you can see it is going like plus 10 also so that's what it is writing here so now you can read this can someone read this second paragraph this you have to include in the write up uh, yes madam uh, a total of a equals to 13 studies are included in the analysis the observed mean differences ranged from minus 69.6 to 4.8 with the majority of estimates being negative 92 percent that is the estimated average mean difference based on the random effects model uh, is equals to uh, minus 22.84 that is uh, having 95 percent confidence interval of minus 31.82 to minus 13.86 therefore the average outcome differed significantly from zero that is having z score of minus uh, zero by uh, nine four point nine eight having p value of less than zero point zero 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 one according to the q test the true outcome appears to be heterogeneous again q uh, 12 is equals to uh, hundred seven point six zero one four having p value uh, again significant tau square is equals to two hundred and seventeen 0.41 and i square 88.4%. A 95% prediction interval for the true outcome is given by minus 53.1027.41. Hence, although the average outcome is estimated to be negative, in some studies the outcome may be in fact be positive. An examination of the student sized uh, residuals revealed yeah, that you one can, this, study... you, this you can leave because I have not told you uh, regarding the student sized uh, because I have not clicked the this out. Uh, I mean, after this basic one, I'll show you the outlier diagnostic. Till the time, since many people are not able to even uh, do this basic one, since they are saying that there is some uh, HTML or some uh, error is showing. So, uh, I think uh, you can, uh, uh, Dr. Anand, uh, okay. so after this, can we go to the breakout room? So that let's see your uh, computer. So, okay, so we have shared the Jamovi file with you. So kindly open that file. Then we'll see what is the issue at your end. But that you install that module, then only it will run. Hmm. Major. Major. So uh, Dr. Anand, can you open the breakout room? Yes. 